We're here at the excavation site in Mitzpe Masoot where the debris left by the Waqf, the organization in charge of the Muslim holy places in Jerusalem, has been transferred. Here we have the recovered material, the elements that are not archaeological but historical, like these stones. I salvage and collect them. Avi Tavisal, jeweler and diamond seller, is the only person who could make use of these stones. Stones that are more than 2,000 years old, which, if they could speak, would undoubtedly tell us the steps of King Solomon, or the footsteps of the prophet Elijah. Extracted from the remains of the Temple Mount in Jerusalem, it is on this site, thanks to an archaeological excavation sifting project that Avi Tavisal allows their story to continue. The story of the Temple Mount sifting project begins in 1999, when an uh, unsupervised excavation of an ancient structure, underground structure that is called Solomon's Tables. In 1996, um, the WAC, which is a Muslim trust who uh, manages the Temple Mount, they uh, started converting this uh, unused ancient structure into a new mosque in order to create uh, facts on the ground towards a uh, final agreement between Israel and the Palestinians. For archaeologists, it would have taken eight years to excavate such a, such a pit because in archaeology it's very important to know what is the context of the finds and do it and, and not to break the, 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 the delicate finds. This dirt is full of, saturated with, with archaeological uh, artifacts. Uh, they can teach us a lot about the Temple Mount. 9,000 tons excavated, inside of which were archaeological treasures. Some were destroyed by these illegal excavations, others were found years later, dumped in the nearby Kidron Valley. For political reasons, the sensitive Flashpoint site had never been excavated until now. In 2004, archaeologists decided to work on the rubble. The excavation project of the Temple Mount, the Temple Mount sifting project, is now born. We developed a wet sifting technique in which when we sift, we see, we retrieve all of the finds, 100% of them. In a regular excavation, you don't. You miss lots of small artifacts. Thanks to the involvement of many volunteers, thousands of archaeological discoveries were saved. With them, the buried stories of the Temple Mount. Once we sift the material and we retrieve all the archaeological artifacts, we discard the stones. We discard the stones. And Avi offered us uh, uh, several years ago to, to create uh, artistic artifacts out of them uh, and to, to, by this way to connect uh, people to Jerusalem. In Jerusalem, Avi's story is one of seven generations. It was in 1861 that his ancestor on his mother's side moved there. As for Avi's father, he is from Poland, where he grew up in an orphanage. He lost his parents when he was very young. My father learned to make jewelry in a childless family that adopted an orphan every year to teach him a trade. When it was my father's turn, the woman fell in love with him and he became like a son to her. Instead of sending him to work in a factory after a few years, she kept him at home. In 1939, when the Germans invaded Poland, she hid Avi's father for as long as possible. When she realized he had to leave for the ghetto, too old to run away with him, this adoptive mother gave him a small pouch with some diamonds. These diamonds saved his life. Whenever a danger arose, he bought his safety for a diamond, a slice of bread for a diamond, to survive. After the war in 1947, he immigrated to Israel. He created his own workshop as a diamond setter. He married Rosa, with whom they had Avraham. Avi, as well, embraced the business. I had broader ambitions than my father. I founded the IDC, the Israel Diamond Center, joined the Diamond Exchange and opened a factory. In 1975, I was 23 years old and had 30 employees. Thanks to the stones of the Temple Mount extracted from archaeological excavations, he created, in the 2000s, a jewelry collection especially dear to his heart. Moriah, named after the mount, the rock of the foundation, and the top of the Temple Mount. These stones are on the edge between historical heritage and sacred relics. I told the people in charge of the archaeological sifting that my project was to magnify them. I obtained the authorization and I have the exclusiveness 
in the whole world. All my life, I've been trying to make a piece of jewelry that is linked to Jerusalem. The combination of the most precious gems and noble metals, gold and diamonds, with the oldest stone in the world, the stone of the Temple Mount. Moriah's creations invite their buyers to experience the spiritual dimension of Jerusalem. The Temple Mount, according to the Bible, is the origin of the creation of the world. The rock of the foundation, the junction between heaven and earth is on the Temple Mount. Adam and Eve, Jacob's ladder, everything is located on the Temple Mount. I live this powerful covenant every day through these pieces. In his museum shop in Jerusalem, you could find rings, wristbands, necklaces, all in the colors of the city, but also unique pieces carved in stone, religious elements, and scenes from the Bible crowned with gold and diamonds. This is one of the biggest stones to be uncovered. Most of the stones are quite small because everything was dumped with tractors and broken. With my artists, we decided to carve the seven days of creation. Unique pieces, each numbered and handmade by sculptors. Avi's stated ambition is to connect those who wear his jewelry to their history, to make them ambassadors of Jerusalem. Moriah is about spirituality. This jewelry has economic value, but its soul is far more valuable than its price. They create a very deep connection to the sacred. They are the story that everyone wants to be a part of, Christian, Muslim, and Jew. The Moriah collection actually devotes several pieces to some elements of the other two monotheistic religions. Some of the Islamic pieces were designed as part of the recent Abraham Accords and displayed at an exhibition in Bahrain. Many of the pieces are on display in several places around the world, including the Evangelical Museum of the Bible in Washington. But the Eternal Jerusalem gives, without a doubt, their most brilliant and faithful setting to the diamonds of Moriah.